Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season we're discussing issues that I've personally wrestled with with regard to the faith. And today, can the saints still have preferences in heaven? We touched on this issue already in the episode on heavenly desires and concluded that we would still be able to enjoy the things in heaven that we enjoy here. Now let's look at some more Bible verses having to do with preferences and see whether they challenge it significantly. Judge not according to the appearance, but judge just judgment. John 7.24 Jesus doesn't say that we should have no preferences here, but only that preferences should not affect our judgment or our sense of justice. That's certainly true. Wherefore, having the loins of your mind girt up, being sober, trust perfectly in the grace which is offered you in the revelation of Jesus Christ, as children of obedience, not fashioned according to the former desires of your ignorance. 1 Peter 1, 13-14 This verse doesn't say that we need to give up desiring the things we used to desire. It only says that many of the things we once desired, we only desired because we were ignorant. For instance, no one really desires money, but almost everyone thinks they do. In reality, what they desire is happiness, security, power, comfort, etc. The desires of our ignorance are like this. Things we think we desire, when really what we actually want is something else. Furthermore, it could be argued that even that isn't the purpose of the verse. Peter does, after all, bring up obedience, which has nothing to do with desire. It could be that the phrase, fashioned according to, means governed by, in which case this is yet another instance where an apostle is warning the faithful to keep Christ as their primary motivation, over and above any other desires which they may once, in ignorance, have placed first in their lives. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims to refrain yourselves from carnal desires which war against the soul. 1 Peter 2.11 This doesn't mean that we should avoid desiring things that are physical, but only that we should resist gratifying desires that place this world over the next in priority. In fact, every instance of the word carnal in the scriptures should be taken this way, as meaning focused primarily on this earthly life. It's also worth noting that in the new heavens and the new earth, things will be just as bodily as they are here, but without the temporary nature that makes the pleasures of this life so futile. So, it seems that our earth-like desires are not doomed, they're just rarely useful in advancing us towards heaven, and are therefore often best ignored in this life. Next, what if a person has a disorder that makes it harder for them to do good and avoid evil? That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.